her role and um, we're looking forward to what you're going to be telling us this morning Linda good day to you thank you and good day to you and um, thanks uh, I have to start to say thanks for some really great presentations from the other presenters I was really happy to hear about your global goals uh, uh, from Rosie and also uh, all the energy from what's happening here in the Nordics from you Erin it's made me it made me almost shiver and just while starting my presentation, I can actually comment on your eagle eye spotting by saying that we have uh, last month, we have we both had uh, two foxes, uh, one lynx, which is, which is a really shy animal, also a moose in the port and also a horse, actually. He was not allowed in the port, but he was sneaking in. <laughs> Are, are I, am I sharing the big presentation or the the, the view? Uh, you need to full screen it. Is it I mean full screen. No, it's not. Uh, from my side, it's not. Uh, the bottom right hand corner of the mm -hmm. PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yes, correct. Uh, sorry, I had what I had. Hmm. So there you go. Well, I'll try to give you the perspective of a port authority on uh, green transition. And I've chosen actually to talk mainly about the ecological or um, uh, climate perspective from sustainability. And the reason for this is that I believe that this is where we can, as a port authority, have the largest impact uh, when it comes to change for the whole port ecosystem and even the larger transport system. And also because I believe that this is where we have the strongest connections between uh, port operators and uh, port authorities. And uh, you were talking about investments, uh, Erin, and I, I think we should cling to that because I will get back to that later in my presentation as well and the economical perspective from sustainability. But just for the, to give you the context, this is the port, as Erin has shown you know, also some really nice pictures. It's in the heart of Sweden. Uh, it's a rather uh, big port in uh, Sweden, but uh, maybe uh, a bit smaller port in a world perspective. And we're owned by the municipality and our main operator is of course Elport. And we have about 6 million tons of goods each year. And we also have, of course, some huge challenges, as uh, also uh, Boris, Rosie and Erin have been speaking about. And here are mainly the goals from Sweden in this uh, picture and also from IMO. But it's, it's enough, so to say. And this needs to be tackled. And we do know that our direct impact as a port, the port of Gärle, is rather small depending on the perspective. Um, even larger is of course the impact from the whole port area including traffic and terminals inside the main gates and also the entry routes and the entry uh, fairway. And even larger are the emissions from the whole entire goods flow. And I show this just because I think believe it's important to have to have in your mind that this is uh, in changing processes it might actually be the best way to achieve uh, uh, transition on a larger scale. And uh, dwelling on this picture, uh, we set out on a journey a couple of years ago. And we started this journey by asking ourselves, while, well, the million dollar question, the eternal question, the one that you need to ask yourself, both you and your organization from time to time. And that is really, who am I and what is my mission? And in this sense, what is support? What is the meaning with support? Why do we exist as a port authority? And in order to ask this, we went out to interview our stakeholders. We interviewed uh, 
both for stakeholders uh, that are terminals, but also like the, the logistic service um, oper the operators and the log logistic service providers. And also we went out to talk to the industry in uh, middle Sweden. And uh, the question why, the answer to the question why we do exist is as always that we do exist because uh, we have to help the industry to uh, get out their projects and in their raw materials to the area. And this industry, uh, we are a window to the world for them to reach their international markets and to stay strong in competition. And as Erin mentioned, this industry is also often forerunners when it comes to sustainability. So how can we, as a port, be an enabler and a catalyst for a green transition for this, uh, this industry? And we drew a lot of pictures together with this, um, uh, our stakeholders when we went around talking to them. And uh, we went, we drew pictures about how they would, how they look at the port and what they need from a port and the port cluster in uh, ten year, a 10 year perspective in order to meet the demands of the Paris Agreement, actually. And we did find a lot of engagement and a lot of um, um, energy while talking to the industry. And actually, we also found out that they see more or less the same picture, a picture of green transition on a, a world perspective. And they see themselves in this picture. And uh, so this is actually not the hard part with the goals, but the hard part is how to get there in pace and in time with each other. And we also understood while talking to them that we actually need to change the way that we look at a port. A port is in the future will not only be a logistics hub, it will also be a hub for renewable energy and green energy systems. So one important mission for a port authority is actually to connect this logistics system with an emerging green energy system. And to do this for all actors to be in pace and time with each other. And since 2020, we're working with a 10 year program that we call an energy optimized port cluster. It's a bit hard to pronounce, but that's really what it is. And within this program, we continually speak with our stakeholders and we invite the port actors to publish their initiatives and action that they are aiming at reaching the targets of the Paris Agreement. And Another goal for this program is also specifically to develop the port as an energy hub with sustainable system solutions that are green. This program, it covers uh, the, the stakeholder dialogue and also uh, the publishing of uh, roadmaps together with them three times a year. But it also covers four major focus areas that we believe that we can make a change uh, as a port authority. The first focus area is to secure physical infrastructure in a future perspective. This means building capacity for electrification and also capacity for new and growing business. And it deals a lot with, as Erin was speaking a lot about as well, grid management, how to, uh, how to make sure that you have power and energy for what you want to do inside a port. It also more specifically deals with shoreside and landside power supply, which is very important for this transition. And for uh, giving green fuels for, to vessels, lorries, trucks. And also about uh, adjustments to allow heavy and uh, long vehicles in the port in, in order to get energy efficiency, of course. The second area is the area that is new for us. And this is, uh, an area that I was happy to hear uh, many of you before me today talking as well. Um, the importance of developing the port as a hub for renewable energy. Uh, what we believe is part of this is uh, working with energy, smart energy systems, for example, peak shaving and uh, uh, the reuse of energy. 
also energy production, as uh, Erin spoke a lot about, which we believe is very important in order to have redundancy in the future. And energy storage, of course. And also for us, it's important to, uh, to develop this hub, uh, this logistics hub is also a hub for hydrogen in a regional hydrogen system. The third area is actually an area that we have been working with uh, since a couple of years, very deliberately. It deals with developing efficient port process in the whole port uh, area that we coordinate and processes for sustainability. We do have a digital tool in uh, Port of Gävle that is, it's a mobile application that we call the Port Activity App, which you can see in the picture. And uh, this is like a device that we use for sharing uh, uh, a joint image of what, uh, what is happening in the port to exchange and display openly uh, estimated times of arrival and estimated times of departure in order to have more efficient and more energy efficient uh, port calls. We also use this device in order to be able to change the port processes. And uh, one example of this is that from February next year, we will uh, change the call process for the energy port for a start where we have a lot of different terminals in the port of Gävle. And we will change this, port, this process by leaving the first, call, first come, first serve principle and allow slot times. And the reason for this is that we want the vessels to be able to go slow steaming when they go to Gävle from the, the port before. This is actually, it's really exciting. And uh, we have calculated that a lot of emissions will be, be able to be saved if we can make this work. And even more, if more ports will try to, will start using this. And we have the uh, shipping companies on board in this. And also just one more, one more example from this is uh, discounts, which we have been wor working with uh, like many other Nordic ports for many years. And, many, and that's discounts for, uh, for example, uh, green calls. If you have, uh, you can get 10%, I think it is, if you have a good uh, shipping index. Uh, and you can get uh, also like 20% if you're using green fuels. And we, I believe we will, we will go on working deliberately with these uh, discounts in the future in order to nudge, nudge the system. The fourth and last area deals with port transformation on a more long-term strategic level in, when it comes to port development. For example, it deals with finding new goods. And uh, one example of this is uh, carbon actually. And we were planning for a carbon terminal for carbon capture and storage uh, volumes in the port. Um, and uh, also building on partnerships and uh, new businesses is uh, business models is something that I believe is really important in on a strategic perspective to make this change take place. And here I'd like to comment on Erin's uh, thoughts about uh, investments. And uh, usually, or generally speaking, we're not, uh, as a port authority, we do not go into terminals and make uh, investments. But when it comes to green transition, we are open for discussions concerning this. And uh, one specific area where we believe this is very important and then and where we do it will invest, that's when it comes to onshore power supply. And I will get back a little to that in my last pictures. Well, when you are quite small port in a world perspective, you have, of course, less total volumes than big ports. And it can be quite a challenge to have return of investment. And it might be easy to feel a bit like this, a bit small and helpless. But sometimes it's actually good to be small because, well, you're less complicated. And also your each unique investment is actually lower. And that uh, may give you the opportunity to move faster and to be a good pilot. And things are really happening. 
this is a picture. Well, it's a it's my last picture, and it's also a rough picture of the port. And this year we are finally electrifying the railway all the way out to the port. Yieldport has been working for many years with electrifying container cranes, for example. And uh, this year and uh, this spring, they are you are also electrifying the bulk cranes uh, through, through uh, uh, refitting and uh, buying new cranes. And uh, this is actually a very, really good, I think, uh, area where you can see the cooperation between the Port Authority and uh, the Yieldport because we are uh, uh, securing the grid and you are investing in cranes. So it's a good, uh, it's a good collaboration. You have also in Yilpot been working for, for years with electrifying your equipment and your trucks, which we are really happy for. And uh, next year in September, we will have the first loading uh, onshore uh, power supply stations, you can call it for heavy lorries outside the port. Of course, we are also working with uh, onshore power supply. As, uh, and uh, this year we are connecting two uh, keys to this, one of Yieldport's bulk keys and also our main energy pier. And uh, in 2023, our plan is to do a pre-study on how to connect container terminal. And we, and uh, our, goal is to have that connected within a couple of years. So it's a really priority and focus for us. We do know, as uh, several of the other speakers have been addressing as well, that uh, ships will be needing not only electric uh, electricity, but also other uh, kinds of fuels in the future. And this is something that we have to tend to and that this means also for this goes also for the other vehicles in the port area and also the lorries that comes here and the uh, shunting trains, for example. Also, we believe it's important to have, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, hydrogen within the port area. And we are working with uh, uh, a partnership where our partner will. Uh, start producing hydrogen in 2024 is the plan. In order to achieve this, as Aaron mentioned a couple of times, it's very important to have grid because this will need electricity, it will need grid. And you need to work very deliberately with this and with your the regional grid operator and also with the production to make this happen. And as I mentioned before, smart energy systems, storage, we have a lot, huge energy port today with fossil fuels, which we have to have something else in this camps tomorrow, I hope. And also smart energy, it's solar production and storage of uh, energy. And the port processes I mentioned, digital processes, not the least, and also looking into new uh, goods and flows in the port area. And uh, well, this is actually my last uh, picture. And uh, to sum up, this transformation is going on and we are very happy to work with the port. Uh, we have a good cooperation, I think. And uh, uh, there's a great force with you guys. And uh, I believe that looking at what happens today, it makes you feel that there is actually hope because things, things are happening. Thank you.